Hey guys, this is So Heidi, and this tutorial is gonna show you the absolute fastest and easiest way to recolor. I love this feature because it really takes the pain out of recoloring any artwork, whether it be a repeating pattern, an entire line sheet or a collection, uh, anything you can think of to recolor an Illustrator, this is the best way to do it. Let's go ahead and get started. Right here what I have is this uh, tank top and pair of leggings and a pull out of the repeating pattern. So I have a couple different types of color happening. I have color positions within a repeating pattern as I mentioned earlier. If you zoom in here, you can see I have flat lock stitching on some of the seams in my garment. So that's done as a pattern brush. And then I also have just solid blocks of color within my garment that are drawn as the entire bodice or the neckline or the inside waistband, what have you. So no matter what kind of artwork you have, this recolor feature works perfectly. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna select all of the artwork and I'm gonna make a copy of that. I'll do that just by holding the Option or Alt key on my keyboard. Drag that over. Once I have that copy made, I'm gonna come up to Edit, Edit Colors, Recolor Artwork. Now, that opens up the Recolor Artwork dialog box. At first, something really weird happened to my artwork and I'll explain this in a second. Your artwork may or may not have done this weird thing by turning it into some random new colors. Um, if your artwork did not do this, you're in an earlier version, probably CC 2014 or earlier, but the newer versions, CC 2015 and newer, try to predict what colors you wanna use based on actions you've recently done in Illustrator. Personally, I don't think it predicts very well, so I never really wanna use these colors that they give me. Uh, what I wanna do if it does result in these really weird colors is there's an eyedropper icon up here in the top right that will sort of resample the original artwork and it will give me the colors I originally had back. All right, so if you get weird colors, that's the first step you're gonna do is resample the artwork. From here, let's take a look at this interface a little bit. On the left-hand side, we have the current colors. These are the colors that currently exist in the artwork. On the right-hand side, we have the new colors. These are the new colors that I wanna change the artwork to. So there's a couple ways to use this interface. It's pretty user-friendly in drag and drop, so I'm not gonna spend too much time going through it, but I'm gonna show you some extra tricks that a lot of people don't know how to do. Uh, the quick and easy way to use the interface is, on the right-hand side, you can switch color positions. If I want the lime to be where the turquoise is and vice versa, I'm gonna drag the color swatches on the right-hand side, meaning I will take the lime, I will drag it on top of the turquoise, and that will switch the positions of those two colors. Now you'll notice it switches that position everywhere within the artwork, whether it's in the repeating pattern or the color of the pattern brush, in my instance, the flat lock stitching, it will switch the color. It doesn't matter if it's a fill or a stroke or where it is in the artwork, that is treated as one color position. For example, we have color block patterns that are shown in the dark charcoal, and we have smaller positions that are shown in the light charcoal inside the print. So if I switch those two color positions, it will change those color positions anywhere within the artwork. I don't really like the way that looks, let's switch back. Now let's look at something else within the interface. The other option we have, instead of just switching color positions, is to actually override color positions. So if you have a print that has too many colors, and let's say, you know, I don't even really like how the lime looks, let's take the turquoise and overwrite the lime. So in order to overwrite colors, we drag from the left to the right. So I can drag from the left to the right, and that will change everything that's lime to turquoise. If I wanna get back to the original colorway, I can just do that by moving the lime over here, or I know I can always click the eyedropper up here to kind of resample the original colors. I will note that there is no edit undo in this interface. For example, if you do that switch and switch the gray and the turquoise, you cannot do command or control Z or edit undo. It does not work in this interface. So each step you do, you would have to manually put it back or just choose to resample your colors. Now, let's say you don't wanna swap colors or overwrite colors, you actually wanna use brand new colors. Uh, the way you can do that is by double clicking on any of the color positions in the right hand column, the new column. So I'll double click on lime, it opens up my color picker. I can choose any random color that I want and that will change everything that was lime to this new fuchsia color I've chosen. Okay, so let's change the turquoise to maybe like a peachy coral color. I'll hit okay and that changes all of that. Now, let's say that looks good for now. I'll go ahead and click okay. 
And what that's done is it's created all new colorways for me. You'll also notice in the swatches panel, it automatically created a new instance of my pattern swatch. So I still have the original pattern swatch with the turquoise and lime, and I now have a new pattern swatch with the new colors in it. All right, let's take this one step further. I'm gonna make another copy of this. Again, Option or Alt as I click and drag. And let's zoom in on this a little bit. And instead of coming up to Edit, Edit Colors, Recolor Artwork, there's a really easy shortcut. Up on top of the control bar here, you'll notice this icon that looks like a grayscale color wheel. You can click that and it launches you directly into the Recolor Artwork dialog. Again, we'll notice that our color positions, it's kind of trying to predict what we might want to do. Again, not exactly what I want, so I'll click the eyedropper to resample that. Now here's a trick that most people don't know. I do have white in a color position within my print, and it's not giving me the option to change white. The reason is because Illustrator by default assumes that you don't wanna change the color position white and the color position black. It assumes these are sort of base colors and that you're gonna leave white, white, and black, black. We can change this very easily. You can come into this little icon right here that looks like a menu, click that. You'll notice it says to preserve white and black. You also have the option to preserve grays. That's not what I want. I actually like having the ability to change the color white. And if I did have black in my print, I would also uncheck black. I don't, so I'll just uncheck white. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, by default, it automatically sort of merges some colors and does some weird stuff, which is not exactly what I want. That's fine. I know I can always come up, click this eyedropper to resample my artwork. That's done. I now have the ability to control the color position white. So I can change this. Let's say I actually decide I want it to be a really light gray instead of stark white. Now that looks a little better. All right, let's take this one step further. And instead of double clicking on here and choosing random colors, chances are you've already defined some color libraries in Illustrator and you're working with Pantone colors or some other selected colors for your collection. I'll go ahead and click color swatches over here and that will load my color swatches. So you can see I've already created some custom color swatches and here's what I wanna do. I'm gonna change this orangey color to my defined coral color, which is the color I know I'm using within my color palette. So all the orange changes to coral. This light gray, I'm gonna change to charcoal. This dark gray, I'm gonna change to navy. And the fuchsia, I'm going to change to the other color I already have called fuchsia. So it's just a bit lighter than that one I had defined uh, randomly using the color model. I go ahead and click OK. Now I've got all the new colors placed in my garment. Again, I click OK. I now have a new color swatch, uh, new pattern swatch with the new colorways in my swatches panel. So you can see if you need to change the colors in an entire line sheet, you can literally select the entire line sheet, come up to edit, edit colors, recolor artwork, or click on the icon here, and you can change the instance of the fuchsia and it will update throughout your entire line sheet. You do not have to manually remake the patterns, manually change all the stitching, manually change all the color block panels. Use this recolor artwork feature and it will go so much faster. Thank you so much for watching and the continued support, you guys. I am so Heidi. If you want more great material like this and tons of free file downloads and assets to help you become more proficient in Illustrator for fashion, take a look at my website and sign up for my email list. Visit SoHeidi.com, click on the yes, send me the free video or whatever offer it is I have right at that point in time. Input your email address and your first name and I will send you insider access to my content. Thanks again, you guys. So Heidi, I'll see you soon.